Welcome to the podcast Behind the Counter with your host, me, Heidi Blum, also known as the Foods Are. I was born and bred in Livingston, New Jersey, and I have seen firsthand over the past few years how food and the people behind the counter can bring a community together. We all have a story. We all have an appetite. Each episode will explore the thread between food, people, and community and the stories that weave them all together. So let's get behind the counter and dig in. Here we go. This is Behind the Counter. Behind the Counter. With the Food Zone. Here's Heidi. Welcome back to another episode and another season of Behind the Counter with the Food Czar, which is me, Heidi Blum. And I'm kicking off our new season with um, one of Livingston's newer restaurant owners-ish. Um, but I can really honestly say I feel like she's been part of this town for a long time. And I think a lot of the neighbors in our town would agree. So I'm sitting with Diala, the beautiful Diala of Bagel Nosh of Livingston. So welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Heidi. You're the best. Thank you. Your voice is very good on microphone. Um, so the purpose of the podcast really is just to get a little bit, you know, n- learn a little bit more about our restaurant owners and um, really for the people who are listening to sort of feel like they have some connection. So we're going to start from the very, very beginning. You got it. Okay. So uh, baby Diala. <laughs> She's laughing. Baby Diala, where were you born and raised? I was born in Amman, Jordan. Mm -hmm. I was raised there until 21. Okay. Then I came here. Remember the day. Really? September 29, 1999. Oh my God. And we're like almost, we're at September 26th. We're almost, I can't do the math. So that's how many years? A long time. Yeah. And so was it a big, did you speak English? Nope. No English? No. And so when you got to America, did you come to New Jersey? Yes. I lived in Jersey City maybe, I would say, two to three years. Okay. And then I moved to Fairlawn. Okay. And how did you learn how to speak English? Uh, It was hard in the beginning. Like, every time I want to go buy something, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to ask. I don't know what to do. So basically, I start just putting shows just start listening to them. What show? What show? Do you remember um, offhand? It was kids. Yeah. It was kids show. Oh, that's good. Because yeah. that's the easiest way for me to understand what I'm listening to. And they're actually teaching kids how to... Sp- yeah. Amazing. Yes. That's that's amazing. Start listening to music. Um, start talking to people. Even if I say it wrong, I don't care. Correct it for me so I can learn it. I don't mind. That's I want to learn. That's the badass in you. Yes. I'm willing to learn no matter how hard it is, how long it's going to take, I'm in it. So how long did it take you till you felt comfortable, you think? I would say two years. Oh, good. Yeah. That's impressive. Yes. And you were young, too. Yes. So it's easier when you're younger. So did you have a job when you came over? I used to work in Jordan. I had a full-time job. I used to be in college. Um, actually, I used to make money more, more than my dad over there. Really? Yes. I used to work uh, for sales for a company. Okay. I used to work for them three days a week, and then from my numbers, they hired me full-time. Amazing. Yep. While I'm going to college. At the same time. They used to pay me for full-time. It's like I'm working there full-time. Wow. Yes. Then I got married, came here, and I remember my first job was at the Rainbow Shop, Central Ave in Jersey City. What's the Rainbow Shop? Uh... Clothes, clothes store, yeah. yes. I worked there maybe for a couple months. Then I stopped. Then I started looking for a real job. And I got hired by a company used to be in Paramus. It used to be a media company called Multimedia Sales. Okay. They used to sell DVDs, uh, VHS, CDs, games back then. Right. And I worked for them almost 18 years. Wow. Yep. And then you became a realtor? I became a realtor in 2013. Wow. Yes. You're, you're a hustler. <laughs> yeah. Why am I getting that feeling? You're a hustler. Yeah. I like to do something. I always want to provide better for my kids. That's I it. have two girls and I always don't want them to go through the hard time that I went through it here. 
So I always wanted to provide more and more and more for them. Sure. I want to get them right where they need to be, ready to start their own life. How and old are they? I have a 23 and 21. Yeah, so what a good role model, by the way. Yeah, my oldest finished college. She went to Jane Madison, yep. and she just took the exam uh, for dental school. Oh, my God, that's amazing. She just passed it, and she started applying for dental school right now. That's amazing. My youngest, actually, she's in her last year at Tremble College. She's going for marketing and uh, social media. See? Yeah. Look, look what you showed them. <laughs> One more year. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Trust me. I get it. So you became a realtor selling homes or commercial? Both. Both. I'm sure you were very successful. Well, you're still doing it. I'm still doing it, but uh, I cut down a lot because if I can't provide the best at the table, I would not do it. Yeah. This place took all my time. All right. Well, let's talk about. (laughs) So so for a very long time, we're on the corner of Mount Pleasant Avenue and South Livingston Avenue. Very busy corner across from town center. And I forget what was here beforehand. Maybe like an interior decorating store, right? Am I right? Yeah, okay. There was multiple businesses. Yeah. And the sign went up that Bagel Nosh was coming. And everyone was like freaking out, like both good and bad, right? Let's be honest. People were like, number one, oh, we don't need another bagel store. Am I right? I read those comments. Yeah. (laughs) Number two, the parking's terrible, right? Okay. Took a while for you guys to open. Was it, it was before COVID? It was, no, it was during COVID. COVID. Yeah. Yes, we had a real hard time. And Bagel Nosh, the other question was, is this Bagel Nosh affiliated with the other Bagel Noshes? Actually, one of my partners owns uh, a Bagel Nosh in Franklin Lake and Waldwick. Oh, okay. So, yeah. The name was not protected. Oh, so anyone could be a Bagel Nosh. I can can open open up a Bagel bagel Nosh. nosh. I'm not going to open a Bagel Nosh. Um, Okay, so, you know, it took a while for this to open, but... I think there was a lot of um, skepticism, I should say, right? Why do we need another bagel place? The parking's going to be terrible. I'm here to tell you, the audience, none of that is an issue because... Thanks God, yes. Yes, thanks God is right. See, I say it like, you know, thanks God. (laughs) But I will say the parking is, I mean, you're in, you're out, and the bagels and all the accoutrements happen to be amazing, and I think... And we're going to get into how you got into this business. But I think it's really because of the pretty face of yours, Diala, and the beautiful smile and the nice personality that has really made people come here. You know, I don't believe that I own the place. I believe every customer who comes in through my door, they own the shop. Because without them, I wouldn't be able to make it. That's an amazing line. It goes both ways. Yes. You know, if I don't be good to my customer, my customer would not be good to me. They would not come back. So you have, it has to be both way. It goes both way in anything in life. And you, you, okay, so you decide somewhere along the line, you're going to open up a bagel spot here in Livingston. You have no connection to Livingston? No, I was selling a house in West Orange. I had the listing in 19 Merklin Ave in West Orange. And I was looking for bagels and coffee for my open house. It took me for bagels all the way to the other side of town. Coffee, I came back here to Starbucks. I saw the empty space, and I'm like, that would be a really good bagel shop. Huh. You know, as a real estate agent. Yeah, sure. You know. Well, it's actually very true because there is no bagel shop on this side of town. It's all on the other side of town. Correct. Yeah, interesting. Yes. I never even thought about that till now. Yeah. yeah. Because when I put in my GPS, all the bagel shop, they came up to me the other side of town. Yeah. And I had to drive. It was a nice drive. Yeah. So when I came back from my coffee, I bought me here to Starbucks. I saw the empty space. That's and amazing. And that's how I thought about it. That's amazing. So, so... You, you saw that it was an empty space, so did you reach out to your friend that's your yes. friend, I'm assuming, business partner? Yes. Yeah. And Who already had other bagel noshes at the time? Other bagel nosh. I spoke with my other friend first, which is also a partner, and then we got uh, Eli, Mr. Omer, involved because he's the one with the experience. He's the one who has the bagel shops. I don't have back experience in bagel shop. So before we opened, I went to one of his stores. I trained for like two weeks. And then we came here. And that was it. I'm being honest. I learned a lot from my employees. Oh. I'm open. 
I like to learn every day. And if I learn so something new, so how did you get new, these employees? Because they know ads, they know really because they know exactly what's going on here. Ads. I put it in Facebook. I go to a group in Facebook in West Orange, Orange Network. I keep putting ads all the time, looking for employees. And after a while, people they start hearing about us and they start calling. Are you hiring? Wow. Yeah. So you didn't know how to make a bagel? No. Wow. No. Did had had you um, obviously eaten bagels, but all the spreads that go along with it? The, Nothing. Did you know anything about? Nothing. You know, it's you know, it's a very. I mean, it's not just a Jewish food, but it's a it's Jewish everyone. food, right? It's everyone, but you know, the lox, the white fish, all the fishes, like with Yom Kippur coming. You have to learn all of all that. that. It was not easy. I'm telling you, it was a really hard thing to do. That's wild. But I worked a lot of hours. Yeah, as I would say there is no one this. who works harder than Diala. I don't know for anyone who's listening. I'm telling you, you come here at six in the morning. She's here. You come here at two when they're about to close. She's here. It is it is impressive. You have to in the food business. You have to be present no matter what. You yeah. have to make sure everything is getting done right. No cut corners. Everything is fresh. The place is clean. Your employees are happy and your customer are happy. Yes. There's respect goes both way between the employees and the customer. So, so that's why. when you first opened, what was the, um, like, what was the, fir- like the hardest lesson you learned when you first opened? Finding employees and managing employees this way. It's hard. And the employees... Ne- didn't necessarily know how to make bagels either or any of the because you make everything fresh here yes so no one knew what was going on uh making bagels my roller knows how to make bagels okay so okay. The, okay yes uh everything else i have to teach some of them they came with some background experience yeah some of them now we have to teach my baker we did teach him how to bake the bagels. And now he's really good. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't even like it when I bake. It's my, <laughs> I was going to say, it's my kid's favorite bagel. So he's doing, some, he's doing something right. Yes, yeah. He's good. Yeah. Um, so that's, in, so yeah, it is, it always comes down to the employees. I think, right? It's staff, 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 staff. Yeah. And you started it during COVID when that was, it was hard. Really hard. It was really hard. Hard. Yeah, so you got lucky because they're all the same people when you first open, right? Not a lot really. of them. No, no, no. They keep changing. Oh, they really? Leave you, they travel. They go to different state. They find a different job. Yeah. You know, as I say, the girls and the guy always—they seem like they're they're always here. My baker had been with me almost. I would say he been with me almost two years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So you're almost open four years. No, two. I opened for business in April. Of, two years ago. Of 2022? Yeah. It's only two years? Only two years. That's incredible. I know. Wow. A lot of people, they think I've been here for years. I'm like, no, it's only been two years. So what's so two years later, what's the hardest part for you now? Is it still the staff? It's staff. The hours? Yes, yeah, staff is hard. Yeah. Like, you know, I can't take a day off, as you see. It's we hard. We open seven days a week. Yeah, yeah, and we open seven days a week. Yeah. We get catering. I have to deliver myself to make sure everything gets done right, set up right. It's hard. But that's also your personality, I, I think, think, that so, you don't yeah. want to let go of certain things. Yes. Well, but that's what makes your quality so special, right? True. Yeah. True. So um, so what's the goal for you? Like, what would you say is the goal for Bagel Nash? To, for the next year, for the next five years, for the next 10 years? We would like to stay open serving the community the same way we would like to help the community and be a big part of it and to keep growing in a great community and stay in business you know for a small businesses a lot of time it's hard to stay in business and sure. keep up especially with the inflation that we're going through yeah it's hard you cannot keep raising your prices and customer yeah. you cannot so it's hard. Employees mm-hmm. also with the inflation, they need to get paid right to be able to keep up sure. with the life expense. Yeah. So I'm hoping that we're going to be in the community for another many years. I don't want to put a limit. Yep. Good. And stay part of it and serve the community and the community be here for us. I, I will say, I mean, number one, that's why I do this, right? It's like for the small businesses, you know, or small restaurants, you know, own, you know, privately owned restaurants or I don't know how, what you say. 
but um, to help them stay in the community, help them, you know, help spread the word that they're here and that you should eat local and all those things. But you do, um, I mean, there's a lot of posts about what you do for the community, whether it's for schools, whether it's for, you know, the um, religious, you know, venues here, or whatever it is. So you are doing your part in uh, making a mark with the community, which is not easy sometimes. As I said before, it goes both way. You know, to be a part of the community, you have to really be a part of it. You have to give back. Yeah. You have to give back to the young kids that we have. They're going to be our future later on. I love kids. That's why if a father or, or a mother come and ask for something, I say no. Yeah. Send your son or your daughter to ask for it. Yeah. And then I'll agree. Oh, that's good. I will not agree for an adult. Yes. Send them over. Let them ask. Let them negotiate. And let them be happy when they get it. Yeah, that's a, that's a really I love good it. lesson. I love when I see their face. I treat the kids in Livingston the same way how I treat my own kids, by the way. Yeah. And I love it. That's amazing. I want amazing. them to be safe. I want to see them successful. I love to hear their stories when they come back from college. You sure. Know, a lot of kids, they come back from the college and they start showing me pictures, telling me stories. This is happening. Look, do you happen? Look. That's amazing. That makes my day, by the way. Yeah. Well, you're a people person, too. Yeah. <laughs> I love people. So let's talk about the delicious food. Okay. okay. What makes your bagels so good? Like, everyone raves about your bagels. I mean, besides, like, the normal types of bagels, you also, just for people who don't know what you have, you have the Asia, Asiago, Asiago cheese bagel and that French toast bagel, which there's not even a sign for it, but that French toast bagel always they, looks they cleaned it. so good. <laughs> yeah. And I have something new. Oh. I have a new item. Gonna start next week. I'm gonna start making zatar. What's that? Oh, zatar. zatar. Z um, look how I pronounce it. I'm, so <laughs> I'm like zatar. Is that am I saying? But yes. that's yeah. What is that? It's thyme with olive oil. It's really good. So is it a bread or is it a? No, it's with the bagel. I'm gonna mix it, make it with the bagel. Oh, that's it's gonna be something new. Oh, so breaking news, people: <laughs> a zatar bagel. But what? Okay, but what? What does make your bagel so good? I'll tell you. We use really, really good quality um, ingredient for our bagel. We do not cut a corner, no matter what's going on. We do, uh, my roll I'll hand roll the bagels, the way how you store the bagels, the way how you brew them, the way how you bake them, the temperature, boil them in the water. You cannot cut corners. You cannot rush. Your bagels just, I'm just going to describe it. They're huge. They're thick, but soft. And they do stay fresh for a couple of days. A lot of bagels harden up like that. Yours stay pretty fresh for... You know, hand rolling has a big part. Really? Yes, of course. Oh, interesting. Yeah, when you touch the dough yeah. and you roll it, it's different than when you put it in the machine and the machine does it. Oh, interesting. Of course. Yeah. Proofing the bagel at certain temperature. You have to make sure your bagels are proof enough. Yeah. Not over and not less. Yeah. When you boil the bagel, you have to know how long you have to keep them in the water for. The temperature for the oven has to be at certain temperature in the oven. How many bagels do you make a day? Mm, it varies. Um, I can give you... Today, <laughs> if you to, remember. Today, I would say, we were like, I would say a minimum 2,000. Yeah, today. that's a Thursday. Yeah. Saturday is probably a lot more. Yeah. Minimum 2,000 today. Because I don't bake one time. We bake multiple times time. a day. So everyone can have a fresh bagel. And do you ever have left, do you have leftover bagels? We do, and we donate them. Oh, nice. Yes. Where do you donate them to? There's an animal farm. They come oh. from Jefferson. In the beginning, I used to take them to yeah. homeless. Then I stopped because of allergy. Oh, so yeah. So I can't hand a bagel with sesame seed, let's say, and I don't know if they have allergy or not. Sure. We had a couple uh, places they come and they pick the bagels and uh, they give them to people in need. Oh, nice. And then that stopped too. The guy stopped coming. Then I, we found a farm in Jefferson. I leave all the bagels for them in the back and they come pick them up to the farm. That's so nice. Yeah, yeah that's good. Yeah. So what's the most popular bagel that sells here? Over here we have the most, most bagel we go through. Yeah. Uh, everything and plain. 
everything in plain. And what is the one that I just ordered that I said everybody talks about? It's the everything egg. Egg everything. Just so funny because like an egg bagel, I never understood it. Like what is it? Is there yolk in the, is that? No, we don't use egg because of allergy. So it's just called an egg bagel, but mm -hmm. what makes it different from a plain bagel? It's just uh, the they put something in it. Yeah. It gives you the taste of the egg, but it's not an egg. Oh, that's so in? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So it's an egg, not they egg, egg bagel. They used to put bagel. the egg. Yeah. And they stopped because of allergy. A lot of people cannot have egg. And what's the, like, by the way, um, just so people know, it, at Bagel Nosh, it's not just bagels. You have all other sandwiches and salads and yes. all, all that. Just so, like, if you wanted to come in and not have a bagel, you can come in and get a wrap. Yes. You can come in and get any other type of sandwich, and you can get, um, you know, whatever, right? We do cold wrap, hot wraps. Uh, sloppy joes we do salad different kind of salad Ch yeah. grilled chicken salad um, grilled chicken salad oh, yes. grilled chicken salad yeah yeah so what's the most popular spread chicken and tuna i heard your tuna is really good i think i tried your chicken yeah chicken and tuna yeah really Maybe we should add the chicken salad to my Yom Kippur order. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. You got it. <laughs> um, so that those are the most popular, like a plain bagel with tuna. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Okay. Good. I like yeah. it. I like it a lot. The wedge, the flagel or the flat bagel with yeah. the scallion and the lox, the tomato, the onion, the red hot cherry pepper. The small sandwiches we sell in the oh, store. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes. We sell a lot of So it's too. a flagel. Yes. With, which is a flat bagel. I mean, I think everyone flat knows at bagels. this point what a flagel is. You know, yeah. I, we're, not a, we're not supposed to say flagel. Why? Because I believe there's one bagel shop where trademark the word flagel. Flagel? So, yes. it's, so, okay. So we have to say flat bagel. Wow. Okay. So mm -hmm. flat bagel. Okay. Yes. And we put scallion. Yeah. Tomato. Onion. Scallion cream cheese. Scallion yep. cream cheese, tomato, onion, red hot cherry pepper, and the slices of lox. Yum. It's really good. We because the lox and the chive probably cancels out the hot cherry pe pepper. Yes. It's not too spicy. No, not. No. Okay. And then do you do make all your baked goods here too? All the yes. muffins and everything? Everything. Most of our stuff, like I would say 99.9% .9 of our stuff made here. The muffin actually, no, they come from Brooklyn. Oh. No, no, no. Muffin, we used to. Yeah. Then I stopped. I found this bakery in Brooklyn. They're yeah. amazing. Of course I you did. I stopped bringing. <laughs> of course you did. Yeah. Yeah. But anything else we make here. That's amazing. So, okay. So, wait, there was a week when the, the baked goods. Oh, so what time does every, your staff come in to start the process every day for the bagels? And then they, make the, they have to make the spreads here too? The spreads, we make them every other day. Okay. Okay. So chicken salad, tuna, cream cheese, anything. You make the cream cheese here too? Yeah. Wow. We buy the filly, the big blocks of filly. Yeah, that's, but that's the base of it. Yes. Yeah. And then we make everything here. Yeah. So what time does the day start for that? Four o'clock for my baker, 5.30 for everyone else. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. So then your baker leaves at what time? When is he like, I'm done baking? Depends. Sometimes 11, sometimes 12. Sometimes he comes help up front. That's a long, it's a long. It's a long day. It's a long day. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, I mean. I don't know. I think I find you so impressive. Number one, that you moved here without speaking English. I mean, like, like that's step number one, just making the decision to come to America. Right. I mean, yeah. that's amazing. Then to learn English, then to really hustle. Am I right? I mean, you're a hustler. Listen, I believe yes, but I have, I always believe with my kids, like I just want to provide for them. I, I mean, want to see them. Having. You're not just providing financially, right? But you're providing life lessons Quality. and you're giving, you're showing them grit and motivation and inspiration and empowerment, all the positives. So, yes. Listen, in life, life teach a lot, by the way. Sure it's does. Every day you learn something in you, no matter how old you are, no matter what's going on. So I always tell my girls, every day you're going to learn something in you. Never say, I know it all. Uh -uh. No. Every day You have to have an new. open mind, though, to accept the lesson. Yes. Yeah. And you have to work hard. You have to try to achieve your dreams. Yeah. You fail once, it's okay. Go back in your feet, start all over again, yep. and you will get there. Yes. The sky has to be your limit. 
Maybe That's you it. should maybe you should teach my kids. <laughs> Bring them over. <laughs> no, they're good. They're good. My kids are good. So I remember my daughter when she went to Jane Madison. Yeah. They usually don't give scholarship. Um, I was shocked that day. I received a phone call from the dean department. Um, and she goes, I just want to know, talk to you. I just want to get to know you. I'm like, what's going on? Is my daughter okay? Yeah. She goes, yeah, but she was picked with other five kids. Everyone has to write an essay. And my daughter came up to be number one, and she earned her scholarship wow. with Jane Madison for for half of her tuition, which is so hard to get at Jane yes. Madison. My daughter wrote about me oh. and um, about my life since I came That's inc- to America. That's incredible. And she didn't even tell me. That's even more incredible. I heard but look at what your team. story did. Number one, for her. Number two, what she received because of your story. Yeah. That's incredible. I have, like, chills. <laughs> oh, my God, Diallo, that's awesome. That's amazing. You're amazing. You're Listen, amazing. Listen, sometimes I feel lonely. I don't have a family here. My parents are not here. My brothers, my sisters. Like, if you think about it, I'm here alone. Yeah. But in the same time, when I look at all the good people that's around me, I thank God for every day. Yeah. That's why community is a family. It's the best. You don't think so. You know, you live in a town. You think you're one of, you know, whatever. But sometimes you realize that really you just belong here. Yes. And the people will help you and you help them. They're amazing. That's I, why I always say, what do I always say? We support them. They support us okay. because it's true. I'm like, what do I always say? <laughs> because it's true, right? I mean, 100%. You know what? You give what you get. Mm-hmm. You get what you give. That's what it is. You yeah. give what you get. My you God. You do the good and you forget about it. I can't it. It talk back. today. My God. But that's the song. There's a song. Yeah. It's you get what you, you get. What is it? You give what you get? You get what you give. Yes. I think so. I think so. I'm I confusing so myself. <laughs> it's been a long day. I'm so sorry. Yeah. It's okay. Um, so, okay. So 10 years from now, you're going to look back and you're going to say, this was the best decision I ever made. Do we say that now? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now a little bit, I'm having a hard time with employees. Okay. Yeah. Keeping employees, having really good employees that you can have a day off. Yeah. You know? Especially with food, as we said before, not like any other business. So I'm hoping it's going to come to a point where I would be able to say, okay, I'm going to go for a vacation right now. Yeah. Or I'm going to take a day off. Or I'm not feeling well. I don't yeah. have to go to work. Yeah. But I think it's coming. Yeah. I okay, good. Coming. I like it. I think it's coming. I think in 10 years, you're going to say this was the best decision I ever made. It is. Listen, I already feel home here in this town. I have so much friend. It's like I've been knowing them for years. Yes. It's, I'm telling you, you, it, you feel like you've been here forever. This yeah. has been here forever. It's amazing. The kids in town are amazing. Yeah. The, the, even like all my customers, they yeah. show you how much they like you. They appreciate they're good. I'm telling you, even when I'm busy and I have a line out of the door, everyone is patient. Everyone, it's okay. Yeah, it is. It's a very... We're here. It's, it's okay. Don't worry. Yeah. Which is, I appreciate that. They see when I'm short staff. Yeah. And they're okay with it. And I love it when I see my customers seeing their other friends and they start chatting and talking and... I, I like- get that when I come in here. They're like, oh my God, is that the food czar? <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Well, I think... Um, I, I, I think... I think I keep saying it, but I think you're amazing. And I'm so glad we got to talk. Thank you. I do. Is there anything else you want the audience to know about you or Bagel Nash? I just want to say that I'm so happy they opened their arm to us. They accepted us in the community and they helped us because without them, we would not be able to be where we are right now. Yeah. I really thank every customer who comes in through my door. With the smile, by the way. Beautiful smile. Beautiful smile. They all have a beautiful smile. They all make my day, no matter what's going on. I really thank them. And I hope we can be able to serve the community for many more years to come in. I know you'll be able to. I know that. So people, get to Bagel Nosh of Livingston. You can follow Bagel Nosh. Yes. On, on, Instagram, on Instagram and Facebook. Facebook. Bagel Nosh of Livingston. Yes. And we're here for the community. We're here for all the kids. They really Send are. Send your kids in when they need something. Let them ask. They have cookies too. Yes. Yes. 
And um, also, Bagel Nosh is located, like I said, it's on South Livingston Avenue and Mount Pleasant Avenue in Livingston. So if you're not from Livingston, come. Maybe you should start shipping, too. Actually, I've been having a lot of requests for shipping. Yeah. We do. I did a couple shipments. The problem, yeah. they were um, first year in college. The bagels will go to a special place in college. And by the time the kids get it's in, over. it's already three, four days. Yeah. But we we I'm, I'm building a website right now, so good. we might add a shipping to it. Yeah, good. So remember, New Jersey is the only place you can get amazing bagels. Not New York; it's New Jersey. So that's people true. want them. People want them. It's Jersey or bust. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I thank you so much for being my opening episode of this season, and thank you for sitting and talking to me. Thank and you. Thank you for being so nice and kind to the community. And to me, when I always walk in the door, so You're I appreciate best. it. So are you? No, actually, we like since the first day we opened our door, you were there for us. You helped us. Thank you. You give us a really hand, and I can't. If I'm gonna start talking about you, we're not gonna finish today, <laughs> Heidi. And you know that. No, thank you. You put the time, the effort. Look, you're away from your kids recording today. Yeah. You just picked up your kids from Tru school. Correct? Trust me. Yes, they're fine, and it's. I'm happy to leave them. No, you I'm just do, kidding. You yeah. do a lot. Thank you. Well, yeah. I like meeting people like you. You're a hard worker, and it's important that the community knows about you and that this is what helps, you know, keeps you here. So it, it we work together. True. Yeah. That's Amen. That's true. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I do, <laughs> too. You. Thank you, Diala. If you are hearing this message, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I'm truly grateful for you and this opportunity. The purpose of the Behind the Counter podcast is to bring food, people, and community together. I hope you'll return for more episodes and explore with me. I want to personally thank Fran Linnell of Design 68 for my amazing Behind the Counter podcast logo and Travis Lohenberg for my awesome Behind the Counter music and all the guests that take their time to sit and talk with me. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please leave a review on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you hear your podcasts. If you'd like to support the Behind the Counter podcast, please subscribe, share with your friends and family, and you can follow me on Instagram at Heidi Blum. If you have any feedback or stories that you want to share, you can email me at foodsrbtc at gmail.com.